Well, folks, I want to show you a video clip back when President Obama was working to pass this legislation. They made some statements about uh, if you liked your insurance, you could keep it. I wonder what he says about our religious liberty. Take a look at this. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. Period. No one will take it away, no matter what. Joining me now is Dr. Richard Land. Dr. Land has been at the, with the Southern Baptist uh, Ethics and Religious Liberty uh, Commission for 23 years now. 23 years. Have been here, you've been working here in Washington now under a number of administrations. Yes. Uh, we, we saw the president's clip about uh, if you like your health care, you can keep it. Uh, what about your religious liberty? <laughs> well, he wasn't telling the truth then, and um, uh, he's uh, been attacking religious liberty. I mean, th this, this most recent... Uh, case with the Health and Human Services ruling is unfortunately just the last in a series of attacks on religious freedom. It's clear that this administration at the very top levels and its Justice Department do not respect and do not fundamentally understand our First Amendment religious freedom protections. Now with the Southern Baptist Convention you represent for policy purposes the largest Protestant organization mm -hmm. in the country. Now, contraceptive coverage is often thought of as a Catholic mm -hmm. issue. Um, but I was out in New Mexico just two weeks ago speaking uh, to, the, to the Baptists mm -hmm. out there. This was at the forefront mm -hmm. of their minds. This is a religious liberty issue. Yeah, this isn't a contraception issue. Uh, it is a religious freedom issue. And we're not just talking about contraception here. We're talking about abortifacients. We're talking right. about covering um, procedures that uh, allow conception but do not allow implantation and any procedure or any medication that expels a conceived human being from from the mother's body is an abortion uh, but this is a religious freedom issue this is telling people of faith Baptist Catholic Lutheran whatever that you are going to fund you are going to pay for procedures that you find unconscionable. And unfortunately, this is part and parcel of a, of a package of Obama administration decisions that show that they believe sexual rights always trump religious freedom rights. Mm -hmm. And of course, there is a guarantee in the Constitution um, that says that we have religious freedom and we have the right to freedom of religion and free exercise of religion. And that includes being able to run institutions uh, as we see fit, without uh, being compelled by the government to violate our consciences. Yeah, well, let's talk about that for a moment, about the Constitution, the fact that uh, this is the first freedom, the mm -hmm. freedom of religion. Uh, we often hear <clears throat> the argument of the separation of church and state, that, uh, you know, if you, the, the church does something, mm -hmm. it's violating the mm -hmm. separation of church and state. We know that the church actually can't violate mm -hmm. the separation right. of church and state. It's a limit on Congress. Isn't this what we're talking about here? A viol th isn't this the actual violation of the separation of church and state? Well, there's no question of it. Uh, it, it is absolutely. It is a, a frontal assault on the free exercise clause of the Constitution, which guarantees you and me and every other American the right to free exercise of our faith. And that includes having schools and religiously affiliated institutions that are run according to the dictates of our consciences mm -hmm. and not being compelled to subsidize that which we find unconscionable. Now, this in, a, in the recent um, ministerial exemption decision um, of the Supreme Court, it showed right. the extreme radical nature of this administration. The Supreme Court voted nine to zero. It was in the Tabor case. They completely rebuffed. Nine to zero. I mean, when, when, when the president's own appointee said, you're wrong, yeah. and, and I thought the Chief Justice was eloquent when he said, Chief Justice Roberts said, I find it remarkable that this administration would argue that there's not a special protection for religion in the First Amendment when religion is mentioned twice. Well, I, I want to I get you to comment on something. I had asked Senator uh, Hatch about this earlier, and that's the... Uh, the president's description of he is a supporter of the freedom of worship, mm -hmm. but that's not what the, the Constitution no. guarantees us. It guarantees us the freedom of religion. There's a vast difference. Between Huge difference, two. and um, it's been very disturbing 
the degree to which this administration uh, has used freedom of worship. Secretary of State Clinton has used it yes. in terms of overseas. Uh, the Justice Department has used it in terms of here in the United States. And the President has used it repeatedly. Freedom of worship is a much more constricted freedom than free exercise of religious faith. Freedom of worship would constrain it to your own personal church services and devotion time and, and maybe to uh, your home and hearth. Right. It's, it, it barely covers the space between your ears and the space between your shoulders. Uh, our, our forefathers gave us something far more expansive than that. It's the free exercise of religion. That means the right to go out and to preach. It means the right to propagate your faith. It means the right to try to convince others. It means the right to live, to, to live your faith and to live, you know, it means free, freedom of conscience means the freedom to live out your faith. And that's what uh, Baptist and Catholic institutions are doing uh, when they say, we're going to run these, these organizations according to uh, the dictates of, of our consciences. And to show you how extreme the president's position is, they were offered what's called the Hawaii Compromise which in Hawaii, they, they say, look, you, have to, you don't have to provide contraception and abortive patient services, but if you have employees and you're offering health insurance, you have to give them information about where they can get this on their own. Well, I can live with that. Uh, you know, I'm, I've never been afraid of providing information. Um, uh, and let's face it. You know, birth control pills are readily available. Most most government-run clinics will give them to you free. Right. Um, so why are they trying to force Catholics and Baptists and others to do this? It is because they want to set the precedent of ramming this down our throats and forcing us to surrender our First Amendment Absolutely. freedoms of religion. And all of the attacks on religious freedom in this country uh, in, in the present day are not violations of the Establishment Clause. They're violations of the Free Exercise Clause. They're trying to suppress freedom of conscience and they're trying to use the government as a bully right. to force compliance. And they've, they've made a step too far this time because, um, uh, you know, Baptist, my, my Baptist forebearers uh, went to prison and died for these freedoms, and we're not going to surrender them. We are not going to comply. Mr. President, we are not going to comply. Well, I think there are millions of Americans that are going to stand with you in that decision. Richard Land? Thank you. Thank you for being with us. And folks, I want to encourage you to let your voice be heard, whether you're Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, or whatever denomination you're from. As Dr. Land pointed out, this is about religious freedom. So make sure uh, you take actions to defend those religious freedoms. And the administration, even though in the, uh, the public is pushing back hard, they're digging in. I want you to take a look at what the president's spokesman said. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to have that video for you in uh, just a moment, but I do want to encourage you again to take uh, the opportunity to contact your members of Congress. Contact uh, those in the House and encourage them to support Sign on uh, to the Fortenberry, the Jeff Fortenberry bill. It's the Respect for Rights of Conscience Act. In the Senate, it's being carried by Senator Roy Blunt of uh, Missouri. Same thing there, Respect for the Rights of Conscience Act. So be sure and contact your senators and your member of Congress. <laughs>